Good morning and welcome to Worship with Ebenezer. My name is Chris Beckman and I'm the corporate chaplain for all of Ebenezer. And if you're watching and participating in worship this morning, you're probably one of our more than 100 communities that make up Ebenezer. You may be watching from Grand Marais way up in the north or joining us from one of our Iowa communities way down in the south. Uh, these services are created for our Ebenezer family, by our Ebenezer family, and we're glad that you are part of our community today, and we welcome you to worship with us on this time during the season after Pentecost. Please join us as we sing our opening hymn, To God Be the Glory. Our service this morning continues with the dialogue, and I invite the congregation to participate with the bold portions of the liturgy. Please join us. Alleluia! The Spirit of the Lord fills the world. Let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Alleluia! With tongues of fire, the Spirit kindles the apostles' zeal. They declare in new tongues the wonderful works of God. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Alleluia! Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful people with your love. Alleluia! The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us now pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Gospel for this 11th Sunday of Pentecost is from the book of Matthew, the 15th chapter, verses 21 through 28, the story of the Canaanite woman's faith. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. 
But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. Here ends the gospel reading. Will you join with me in prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be ever acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and Redeemer. Amen. This is one of the most difficult passages that I come to on a regular basis, and my feelings never really change about this text, because to be quite honest, I don't really know what Jesus is about in this passage. And unfortunately, it doesn't look good. I don't know about you, dear friends, but it's hard for me to imagine that Jesus is not doing the right thing in the passage. I know that sounds uncomfortable, but look at it with me. And I have looked at this again and again and again. And none of the solutions to the struggle really ever make sense. Look at the text. We have a poor woman and a child who is sick. One who is shouting after Jesus, Have mercy on me, son of David. And you can just hear it, can't you? She is shouting again and again and again. Annoyingly, you can just hear it. You can just kind of cringe, right? But we expect more from Jesus, our Lord and Savior, than what we get. The Gospel text says the poor woman, a sick child, shouting. And what does the Gospel say? Jesus did not answer her at all. That doesn't sound very good. That doesn't sound very much like the Jesus that I know. Jesus did not answer her at all. Why? Why is the question that I have spent a great deal of my ministry trying to understand. Was he just annoyed by this? Was it annoying because of the shouting? And so he just says, I'm not going to even answer this. Was he exhausted? Remember, just last week we were talking about Jesus sending the disciples ahead, dismissing the crowd, going up to the mountain to pray. It was exhausting constantly being around people and preaching and teaching and dealing with the whining from his disciples. Was Jesus just exhausted? He didn't answer her at all, the gospel says. Or worse, was it because it was a woman? Was it because Jesus was only going to talk to the men? Lots of parts of Christianity could have read it that way. I'm not going to address a woman. Was it more that Jesus kind of felt like, I've got more important people to see? to heal, to touch, than this complaining woman and her sick child. None of this is sounding good, is it, friends? What do you think is happening here? I wonder if it has something to do with the fact that the woman has a child who is sick, we say with a demon. Did Jesus just not want to deal with someone who had a demon, demon possession? 
A lot of the commentators have tried to make light of this response of Jesus and said, well, he's going to make a point later on. And so Jesus is not really ignoring this woman, not really uh, saying, I don't want to talk to you, not even really being exhausted. He's just, he's just setting us up to make a point later on. I don't know that that logic really works for me. I'm a little bit too skeptical. I don't know what is going on here. Could be that the Canaanite woman is simply calling Jesus to account. You say you're here for the poor. You say you're here for those of us who are sick. Then show up. I'm here and I'm in need. Maybe. That's kind of a radical notion. But what we do know is Jesus did not answer her until he does. And he even kind of comes even a little bit meaner and says, well, I am here to call the lost sheep of Israel, which the Canaanite woman is not. He is here to call the Jewish people, he says. The lost sheep, not some Canaanite woman who is shouting at me with a sick child. I'm saying this bluntly, friends, because sometimes we get into these passages and we know them too well and we miss parts of it. God, you love this woman, though, because she, like so many of us, is willing to take a lot in response for her child. And she says, well, you know, I get that, Jesus, that I'm not part of the lost sheep of Israel. And that you maybe don't want to give all to someone like me. But even the dogs are able to have the crumbs that are dropped from the table. Sit with that for a while, friends. Even the dogs. She's saying, I am so lowly in your worldview, disciples, maybe even Jesus. But I still deserve something. Even the dogs get the scrum, the crumbs that fall from the table. How about me, a child of God, created in God's image, with a child who is sick and needy? I think we can understand the woman a little bit, dear friends, and maybe even have a great deal of empathy for her. Maybe that's the point of our story. She says simply, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. I think we can understand this woman. How many of us have grown up with a member of our family who has struggled with mental illness, depression, anxiety, addiction? My dad I grew up with had schizophrenia from the time I was a boy of five years. I have to say and confess, dear friends, when I read in the gospel texts, um, Jesus encountering someone with a demon, Jesus encountering someone who doesn't seem quite right in the head. I have to believe, or I often look to say, are, are we really talking about mental illness? Did this Canaanite woman's daughter have a demon? Or was she struggling with some form of schizophrenia or some form of mental illness that they couldn't identify then. I mean, for heaven's sakes, when my dad got sick when I was a boy, which is 50 years ago, my community, my small town in Minnesota, they, they reached out to us and wrapped us in love, but they didn't understand mental illness, and they perhaps still don't fully understand. The treatments were horrible, and they rarely worked. And it was incredibly painful for everyone because no one really understood what was happening and whether there was choice involved or whether it was a chemical imbalance. How much more did the biblical authors not understand mental illness? I don't know. What I know is that this woman's child was sick that she would have done anything for her child 
even groveling on her knees at the feet of Jesus. How many of us have family members or friends that we would do that very same thing for? I will do almost anything for my children. I will do what I have to do. And that maybe is the story today, dear friends. We have a woman whose child is sick, who encounters a Jesus that is is distracted, exhausted, I don't know. But she has to call attention to it and say, Jesus, I am going to shout so loudly (laughs) that you will have to take acknowledgement of me. I am going to shout, I am going to beg, I am going to plead, I am going to fight for my child's health and wellness. How many of us have done the same when our children or our grandchildren have been struggling? How many of you have signed loans or gone to co-workers or reached out because you knew that you might be able to help one of your loved ones in need. How much more so when it is our child or our grandchild? How many of us would sacrifice even our own internal organs, giving a kidney or a liver to someone that we love? This mother was going the distance for her child. What's interesting to me about this story, dear friends, is how much work this mom was putting into this and how much she maybe even didn't expect that this would work. But it doesn't stop her. She goes against all hope. The disciples are saying, go get her out of here. She is annoying us to no end. And she doesn't give up. She doesn't stop. She keeps going, even in the face of really, really difficult odds. You know, I wonder how many of us have a sense of that woman's plight, that mom's plight during this time of the pandemic. You see, it feels to me like every time I get a handle on one part of this crisis, something else happens. And I keep asking myself, can I really take more? Can I really handle more stress and more pain and more struggle? It felt like we had just gotten this pandemic somewhat under control. We were working as a community to wrestle with testing and keeping our people and our staff safe. And then George Floyd was killed just a few blocks from where my office is, where buildings were still burning when I drove to work those very next days. And I said to myself, ashamedly, I can't take anymore. I I don't think I can handle coping with a pandemic and dealing with my friends here and trying to keep them safe. And then adding this colossal experience of racism and inequality and injustice right in my back door. I said, I can't take anymore. I feel like I get a little bit of what that woman was feeling. As she was worried sick, worried sick about her child. And maybe that's the beauty of our story, of our gospel message, that at the very end of our rope, at the very end of our experience, at the time when we are most at the bottom, when we can only cry out, have mercy on me, I can't take it anymore. That is when grace comes unexpected, thought it never would get here, arrives. You see, what's most amazing to me about this gospel story, and for the first time, 
it finally clicked for me. You know, when Jesus heals the woman, the child, he doesn't do it like he does in so many other cases. He doesn't lay hands on the girl. He doesn't make a batch of mud and spread it on her eyes like he does with the blind man. He doesn't even say anything to the girl. Let the demon be gone. None of that. Look what the text says. It says, let it be done for you as you wish. Let it be done for you as you wish. Wouldn't you have expected Jesus to have said, your daughter is well. I command the demon to go. Let me lay hands on your daughter's head and she will be healed. Instead, you might actually think that Jesus is a Minnesotan here. This is a passive healing. You know, we know all about being passive. In fact, this is how my grandpa would have probably said, well, let it be done, you know. And, you know, and then she was healed. That's how, that's how the gospel says. That's not the Jesus I know. But maybe, maybe the point of this story whatever it is, is it's highlighting the tenacity of this mom for her child. It's the tenacity of all of us who keep going during this time of the pandemic. You know, the unfortunate reality, dear friends, is we don't know how long this is going to go on. And I know that you can handle more. You might be saying to me, oh, chaplain, I'm done. I can't take it anymore. And what I know to be true is that you are far more resilient than you know yourself to be. And sadly, you can take a lot more and I can take a lot more. That's because we are strong, resilient, faithful Christian beings. But we, we, we are like that woman today crying out, saying, I can't take it anymore. I, I just can't take it anymore. And maybe Jesus is passive <laughs> healing. I mean, really, why didn't he at least do something? I don't think he was just doing this for us Minnesotans or us Midwesterners, giving us a passive healing. I think maybe one way is that Jesus is acknowledging the deep work of this mom, your faith, your deep, abiding, resilient, strong advocacy and faith is an integral part of this healing process. Maybe Jesus is just saying, I don't, I don't need to do something miraculous here. I can acknowledge the faith and see the effort and believe in the strength. And in a way, Jesus is saying, I honor you. I honor your strength. I honor your faith. And the healing I join with you in. Maybe. Maybe not. But dear friends, you ought to be struggling with this passage. It is not as clear as you might be thinking it is. Read it carefully. That's one of the challenges for us as Christians, especially with a passage that we know so well. What's really going on here? I don't know. But I'm taking from this that I'm a strong person of faith. You are strong people of faith. You've made it through a lot to get this far in life. And unfortunately, friends, we can take a lot more. But that is why we are people of faith. We are beacons of Christian heritage. Because we know that no matter how low things go, no matter how distressed we get, no matter how much concern is piled on in this world, that we will know that we are Christians by our love. For our family, for our friends, Love for ourself. You see, God is with us 
And I love that Jesus doesn't take over. <laughs> I really do. It's kind of amazing that Jesus says, I, I love what is happening here. I love your strength. I don't need to take over this whole situation. I can simply walk aside you and bring healing right beside you. And that maybe makes it even more beautiful on our journey ahead. Blessings on the journey, my friends. Amen. Will you join us as we sing our hymn of the day, one of my favorites, Sweet Hour of Prayer. I hope you can join with us as we sing together our hymn of the day, Sweet Hour of Prayer. now confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, guide the nations of the world into ways of justice and truth and establish among them that peace which passes all understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, we pray that the Spirit may move every human heart, that the barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
O oh God, you created all people in your image. We thank you for the astonishing variety of races and cultures in the world. Enrich our lives by ever-widening circles of fellowship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you have given us this good land as our heritage. Make us always remember your generosity and constantly do your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, keep this nation under your care. Bless the leaders of our land, that we may be a people at peace with ourselves and a blessing to our other nations of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, look with mercy upon the people in this land who live with injustice, terror, disease, and death as their constant companions. Help us to eliminate cruelty to these, our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Join our voices, we pray, Lord our God, to the songs of all your saints in proclaiming that you give us victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Open your hearts now to God and receive the blessing. May Almighty God bless you during this time after Pentecost. And may he protect you against all sin. Amen. Through the resurrection of his Son, God granted us healing. May he fulfill his promises and bless you with eternal life. Amen. And may Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. We're very glad that you joined us for worship this day. And we're glad that you are part of our Ebenezer family. We pray God's blessings and peace upon you now and always. Let us now be dismissed on this day. Go in peace, serve the risen Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn today is, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Won't you join together with us as we sing our closing hymn, what a friend we have in Jesus. <laughs>